Can you hear me right? So my experience with the American Studies program was rewarding but exhausting because we had uh, political science, American history, the American decorative arts, and American literature. And we had the same students that took all four of, of uh, those courses. Um, it was also difficult to keep that momentum because we found that student schedules did not allow them to take always take the same four classes. So that lasted for a year, uh, and then we sort of dissolved that idea. But uh, Paul and I, being diehards, <laughs> decided we liked the concept of team teaching, so we decided we would just do an American Studies program. Paul taught the history, and I taught the literature. And we did that for over 25 years, I think. Um, and that, that was a, a, a most positive experience. And based on that, I would recommend team teaching. By the end of it, uh, we might even have known what we were doing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there again, going back to personalities, and I mean, you know, Paul and I just, you know, click, you know. He, he would embarrass me, I would try to embarrass him. And that, <laughs> that, that's no. clicking. Hey, that's clicking, and, but no, but we had a good time and, and uh, could, you know, pick up on each other's um, ideas and uh, ran our classes pretty similarly, and so that was uh, real easy and mm -hmm. fun. I'm remembering two things, one earlier, one later. The earlier was the dean who said to me one day, can you come up with something that's like, you know, independent studies program? I said, I suppose. He says, well, why don't you just work on it for, say, a couple of days? And, <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we came up with what we used to call, I don't know what it is anymore in the catalog, the Plus 20 program. <coughs> of all of those independent studies, which I think is still taught by a few people. I haven't taught it in a number of years, but it's still there. Um, the, the later story has to do with the grant that we received in 1991 from the National Endowment for the Humanities, which was to bring together the humanities and the sciences and technology. And it's about team teaching because <laughs> the point of it was to eventually create this course called Making Connections in which faculty from the humanities and the sciences and technology would have something to do with the course. Well, sure, when we had the money from the grant, we could pull that off nicely. And on the first day that we first taught the course to 24 people, there were 24 faculty. <laughs> That's one on one. And those students were ready. They were petrified. They were ready to just fly out of the room and say, forget this. Uh, it was beautiful, though even brought back some of the scholars to visit us, which we had the money to do. Since then, there are about two of us now who sort of team teach that class on Friday mornings, myself and Helen Pileschi. But um, it was a moment I won't forget. I remember an early innovation. I don't know whose great <laughs> idea it was. Uh, I think it was an administrative one to do CAP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was up to the departments as to how we would um, fulfill those extra credits at the end. They ended the semester a few weeks early and we attached about four weeks to the end of the semester to do some special project, whatever we came up with. And I can remember that in English we were doing one-on-one -on -one with students and uh, going over, sitting down, going over their papers yeah. with them word by word. It yeah. was exhausting. It was just ridiculously exhausting. And I don't know how effective. I'd like to think that it really did help the students, but we didn't see much difference in their yeah. performance. Yeah. Um, but um, and I, I, I know that in foreign languages, I also did something at the end. That's funny. I remember the English. Maybe it was because I did the English cap. You can only do one mm -hmm. um, and not the foreign language. I, I did, couldn't think of anything I could do in four weeks yeah. with foreign languages. <coughs> okay. But recently, um, recently, the push has been to become computer literate so, <laughs> because we wouldn't be <laughs> uh, so behind our students and technology literate. Just, it has gone beyond oh um, just computers. And uh, I, I tried to get in with that. I, to the best, I, I got a computer. <laughs> 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 I used my email. <laughs> 
Well, I, I know some people who don't. <laughs> and I, um, no, I've even, I've done that, but I even am using um, a um, laptop in the classroom for my students to email back and forth to um, students in other countries. So uh, we're, I've learned to do PowerPoint. <laughs> These are innovations that I have, I have put in a lot of hours, a lot of hours. PowerPoint, that's something else. I decided that I would really, um, it would be wonderful to have all my old slides that were falling apart anyway on the, power, on the computer, PowerPoint slides. And now they tell me on a zip disk is not good enough. Mm. Now we need to put it on a CD. There's always something else with this, yeah. with this technology and I'm just wondering where it's going. Like you said, as long as we're willing to put in the time, they'll let us go with it. I was amazed that I was able <laughs> to get that laptop for my students to use in the classroom. I, it, but um, they, I assured them I would use it and they allowed me to make a proposal and, and, and get one to use. Um, and, and it's been uh, very nice to have. Now I am currently um, looking forward to making an attempt to learn our Blackboard system well enough to be able to offer a language course that doesn't look as if I would ever be able to offer it as a class, offer it online. Now, I, this is quite an undertaking. We're still trying to figure out how I'm going to get any speaking done in that, but um, that's, that's going to be quite a challenge. In a way, I'm scared of it because we've been telling you where I told you where I came from <laughs> okay from a little girl out in segregated schools in Mississippi to organizing them creating an online web course I you know I did I just don't know that's a, that's a lot of uh, change there but I, it's exciting it's exciting and it's new things like that that keep me kind of energized guess what I'm doing what are you doing? Teaching my introduction to philosophy course online. Online. Well, uh, I'll come to you to find oh. out how it's done. <laughs> it, it was hard work. But you know, we're living proof that you can teach, you know what, new tricks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that you can learn new tricks. Yeah. <laughs> to teach. <yes. laughs> to teach. Well, we are flexible. We are changeable. Terrific. Um, I don't know what else to call it, but the pillow room. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you call it. Did uh, each of you teach at some point in the pillow room? Or? Mm, I did, did you? I <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to be that relaxed and yeah. get them to speak uh, a language. I, I haven't <laughs> taught down there. I, I haven't taught down there in years. Does it still exist? Yes, it still exists, and some people oh. teach there, including some people in technology teach there. Oh. But quickly, you should know this is another Pete Rush story. You said well, earlier. We like to hear about the origins of the pillow yes, room. And, yes. And all that. You said that was then. This is now. Mm -hmm. Well. Pete made the mistake of saying to me one day, gee whiz, I've got $5,000 <laughs> left in the budget. I said, well, let's create a new kind of classroom. He says, give me a design, give me an idea tomorrow morning, and you've got it. Well, I've never done anything like this before, but I thought, shoot, why not? So I went to this place. It was a dance floor called the, uh, what was a German name to it? What was it? The, uh, I'm not going to guess it any okay, dance floor okay, names. Okay. <laughs> And I went there and I figured out the pillows and the floor looked like a little dance floor. And I, I quickly overnight, you know, did a messy design for it. And he says, we'll do it. And that's where all that $5,000 went to was to put that classroom down there. And it was crazy because uh, the, the step from the first level to the second level was about four or five feet high. So they had to create a staircase to get up there. Then if you do that, you hit your head in the ceiling. Right. But still, it, it worked as a classroom for unusual type classes, maybe. And uh, that's the story of how it happened. If, if some dean said to you today, gee, I've got $5,000, you wouldn't have 24 hours to come up with an idea, you know. Dean committee. would never say that no. to you today. <laughs> no, <laughs> they would never. The but architects wouldn't approve it either. No, they sure <laughs> wouldn't. But that's how that happened. Well, in, in the uh, crunch years, when we didn't have enough classrooms, I. I taught uh, two and three classes a semester in there because ah. nothing was available, and so I was just doing my conventional lecture yeah. course. In How did you American like history. it? The uh, students fall asleep. The students who <laughs> didn't care for history liked it a lot because they were all asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they would have been asleep anyway in another room, so they'd have been more comfortable. Yes, uh, that was a problem. But uh, one of the funny things about that 
was when they were in the process of oh. Oh. that place in town that I imitated. So you went I, there doing research. I went there doing research. I did not smoke. <laughs> Del B. Lake story. Uh, all right. Whatever the stories are, let's uh, hear them. We can always edit them out. Yeah. Well, you might edit this one out. Um, he asked me to go to Vicksburg High School to take his place to give the high school seniors some kind of a talk. I don't remember what this occasion. It was graduation. Back then, yeah. I don't know what you'd call that talk, but back then my hair was down to my waist, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to Vicksburg, and this guy looked, the principal looked at me, and he said, Dr. Lake sent you? I said, yes. He said, look at me. He says, my teachers dress like me, cut their hair like me, talk like me. He says, I don't want you here. I says, well, Dr. Lake sent me. He says, yeah, for that reason, I'll let you. But he says, I don't like this one bit. So I gave my, my spiel, and afterwards he stopped me, and he says, it's okay. How about you come back and teach my, my teachers? <laughs> I did that for two years at Vicksburg, yeah, right. yeah the wow. high school there. So yeah. Dr. Lake did that to me. But the hair thing, you see, he also did that to me because one day he called me in. He said, why don't you cut your hair? Honest, I said to him, don't you wish you could grow yours? And that did it. <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> that really happened. Some of the things I remember, uh, first of all, the, the first semester teaching English, it was a new school, and so we didn't offer any second semester courses. All we offered were first semester courses. And I had five, what are now English 110, five college comp courses. That is an incredible load for, I mean, I wouldn't even do it today. I would say, no, thank you, <laughs> I can't do this. Yeah. Uh, the papers were just immense and never ending. Uh, and I look back and I think it was a good thing I was young and energetic uh, and had really no life other than school <laughs> because that's all I did was grade papers all the time. The second semester was better because then we offered some 110, uh, which was 101 then, and then 102, which had some literature in with it, so it wasn't just the writing, but then you had to read all of that stuff, etc. So that's one thing I remember. The other thing I remember is the second year we were in Redwood and how crowded it was. Yeah and that we had classes that started at 7.30 in the morning That's in right. order to get everybody in and ended at, I remember on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I taught from 7.30 in the morning. Mm. That was my first class and my last class ended at 10.30 at night. Those are long days. <laughs> so. I had a 7.30 a.m. class once and I never made it in time. <laughs> One day I showed up and Pete says, I don't see you. <laughs> <laughs> You and I took students to Europe a couple of times, didn't we? Yeah, let's hear about the trips. Did you? I have yes. programs like that. Well, uh, yes. Well, uh, back in those days, I had forgotten about that. That's been a <laughs> while. Well, I mentioned earlier that I was um, married to a guy who was a French teacher at Western, and they had a um, program where they we took students over every summer. We didn't take them every summer, but it kind of rotated through their, their faculty. He was the one teaching the course, so to speak. The, the students actually spent a month in, uh, at Grenoble University in um, mid-southern France, um, and then they with staying with families so that they could become immersed in the language and the culture and then um, had a couple of weeks free time and then spent a couple of weeks in Paris. So we were gone for two months and we did this. I made all of the arrangements. I made all of the arrangements for the families. I wrote all the letters for the, the uh, hotels. I made the flight reservations. There were scares all over the, all the time because they were usually charter flights. We were trying to go the cheapest way. And of course, my um, students could go as well. Any student from around the country could go with the program. That's the way they are now. Um, and uh, it was a great opportunity. I did it about every three years. And um, 
My, my kids grew up thinking that everybody went to Europe about every three years <laughs> or so. <laughs> but anyway, um, that, was, that was wonderful. And, and it was back during a time when students enjoyed, they would go with you when you went to show them Napoleon's tomb and tell them yeah. the story of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. Not, and um, nowadays, I'd have to admit, I, 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 don't, I don't do tours. And I, I really encourage students to travel together but on their own <laughs> because they like to do a variety of things that don't come under study to <laughs> right. Right. and um, right. often don't have the the energy to get up and then go yeah. <laughs> visit the monuments and go to the museums <laughs> but um, I will say though that um, students still are interested in travel and they you can still find programs like this around the country although they are very very expensive, very expensive now yeah. and um, I, I encourage students now to go to countries to, we offer a study travel award and we encourage students to go and live with families and do this kind of thing um, and become um, more comfortable with the language and learn more about the culture that way. We still encourage it. Yeah. I'm just gonna throw in before I forget, mm -hmm. back in the 70s, you could take 32, 33 students mm -hmm. To Europe for four weeks, mm -hmm. have a Mercedes-Benz bus, driver, private rooms, food for a thousand bucks, airfare and everything oh, included. Easily. Can't do that anymore. Easily. I remember that yeah. price for our first um, um, tour for two months because we didn't get the Mercedes bus, um, but for, was $750. They were two months in Europe for yeah. 700. Now the two weeks free time, yeah. they needed the extra money. But that included everything, all their meals, all their yeah. hotel, all their family stay, and the little tuition at the university yeah. was nothing. Mm -hmm. um, that was then. That was then. Tuition still is low in Europe, <laughs> but things are much more expensive now. Yeah. But you can still do it a lot cheaper than if you <coughs> get one of these tours. Even True. the uh, tours that are supposed to be for students, True. they are charging way too much. Yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. People got to make a, a profit. Maybe we need to do another one so Maybe. they could have a, yep. a reasonably priced tour. Sure. They Let's wouldn't do have it. to pay a couple of thousand dollars. Right. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> they think we're going to retire. We'll show them that. <laughs> retire to Europe. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You have Everyone to come came back. back. Bring Everyone them came back. back except the tour group leaders. <laughs> well, the, uh, the R word has come up, uh, and that brings me to a, a topic. You all started in 68, mm -hmm. September. Did you have any idea at that point that you'd be here 30 some years, that <laughs> this would become a career, that this was uh, not only the beginning, but uh, probably the end as well uh, of a career? And uh, then what's kept you here all this time? Uh, what about place? or your family or what I mean a lot of things that might work to cause you to stay but, um, well did you did you about, notice about these ideas? the things that we said I, it's all of those things you just mentioned the place the people family we've gone around and seen a lot of other places the school does allow us to travel mm -hmm. and uh, frankly I was never able to see any place that I, I had people show interest in me and I looked at what they had to offer and I thought, oh no, we were doing that years ago. You know, I don't yeah. need, and now I've, I've moved on from that. If I came to you, I'd have to do all that all over again. Um, I never found, and I could never be sure too, that I would find a place that would allow me to do <coughs> what I wanted to do as long as I was willing to to yeah. put forth the effort. I, th I think most of us, since KBCC is that kind of place, we must be the type of people who don't mind putting forth the effort, but we like the um, ability, we like to be told that, okay, go for yeah. it, try it. We'll, yeah. we'll allow you to see if, we can, if you can put it together and if it'll work. Um, we like that. Uh, and um, I, 
I was amazed that I first came here <laughs> because I always had told myself I wanted to go back to a warm place. I came from Mississippi. Michigan is so cold. I still complain about the cold. Pat and I go running and she's constantly telling me, you won't, I don't even like to run in the rain. You won't melt, she'll say. <laughs> Come on, we can do it. And of course, it's fine once you get going. But I always thought I would go to a place like California. <laughs> and I kept telling myself, remember, you're going to go to a place like California. <laughs> but there was never a place in California yeah. that I wanted to go to, <laughs> not for a place of work. So, um, and the fact that we're still working says we're still liking it. So Well, uh, the job description for me changes almost every year. <laughs> I mean, I, this isn't the same job I had when I was first hired. That means it's always fresh and brand new. That helps a lot. And, it's the atmosphere and the people, the presidents, yeah, all of it. I would agree with all of that. Yeah, the the, uh, the it, when Johnny mentioned that we would go to conferences and and people would be amazed at what mm -hmm. we were doing. That we it seemed like no matter what kind of conference we went to, yeah. we were always on the cutting edge. Yeah. We went to learn more about something, and we ended up being like mm -hmm. mentors. And it was uh, you know this this was you know, the best place to be and, and, and encouraged uh, to keep, you know, being innovative. And it's just always been fresh and new. And you know what's really eerie is that this morning, after that talk this morning on assessment, Martin Obert was sitting next to me and he says to me, is this all vaguely familiar to you? I said, yeah, it's the way we were. <laughs> it's the way we were. Well, I think uh, what you've been addressing is something you joked about and sometimes said seriously. Uh, we talked about Happy Valley. Yeah. Was it? <coughs> Is it? Well, nothing's happy all the time, or it's crazy, right? <laughs> happy Valley sounds like a crazy house if it's happy all the time. Um, but that's like what? Um, a marriage or having kids or what? It's, it can't be just you're in love all the time no. with them. <laughs> there are times when they you say, my goodness, <coughs> don't you know me well enough to, that you wouldn't do this or you would yeah. the same. Um, but um, that's human nature. That's people working together. Um, so it can't be perfect all the time. And if it's fixable or if it's ignorable, <laughs> then it's see, still okay. But you see, all of that is what makes us happy. Right. We understand right, that. Right. We know it can't be perfect. We've made, I'm sure we've made some enemies around here, <laughs> but that's okay. I think there, there's always been the possibility for change, too, even when things weren't going well or didn't seem quite right. Uh, you had the, the, the feeling that it could be changed, uh, it could be different uh, if you persevered, if you, you know, made the point, if you were inventive and creative and, and worked with people. Um, and I think that was a, a real key. I always felt like the, the glass was always half full, not half empty, that it's, yeah. oh, duh, this is how yeah. it has to be. But, you know, no, it could be different. Mm -hmm. And the atmosphere is one of goodwill. Even it if is. you disagree with peop people's philosophies, even if you disagree with um, the way they're going about things, you cannot dislike the person. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. impossible. And mm -hmm. we can still get along, we can still socialize, we can still laugh and talk. Um, and then, no, I won't go with you <laughs> to do this because I disagree with this, but that's okay. That's okay. So that makes for a um, good relationship too. Maybe uh, the philosopher would say, hope and you're happy. Yeah. Good point. I always felt like uh, if there was something I didn't like or that I wanted to change, I had the hope of doing something about it yep. or making the change yeah. or whatever. And, uh, all right, any last idea that has come to mind, <laughs> something that uh, just has to be said. Uh, you want to get a little clean in? Anything? You want the last word? 
No, not necessarily do. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to wrap it up, Bob? <laughs> Bob's our philosopher. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, let the philosopher wrap it up. Wrap it up. <laughs> We're lucky. I think the word luck has to come in here. There's been a lot being said these days. Martha Nussbaum's book on luck, uh, among others, she's a philosopher down east somewhere. Um, that part is essential to, to recognize because it isn't just all our doing. Boy, were we lucky. Lucky to be here, lucky to be numbered among the first who were here, and lucky to still be here. Thanks a lot.